Hello everyone, this is Ted from Whole Latte Love Repair. I'm a repair technician for the Repair Center. I'm going to be going over on this video how to change uh, some of these older machines, the Gaja Coffees, which are you know old. This one's from 1998, still works. Um, but I'm going to be showing you how to convert what's called the orange old pump. Uh, if you happen to have a pump failure in these older machines, you can change it to a new pump, but we don't offer, nobody offers that older version pump that's inside the machine. So it has to be changed over to this new pump, um, which is slightly different than the one in there. And I'm going to show you how to do that. It's not too difficult. Um, I will tell you that, you know, you can order the pump and you're also going to order this wire um, to make your life a little bit easier. And we'll have descriptions and part numbers listed somewhere above or around the video or whatever. Um, but I'm gonna be showing you how to do that real quick. So first thing we're gonna do is we're going to remove this top cover. You need a Phillips screwdriver to do so. Um, and the other tools you're gonna need, real quick, sorry, is a 12, meter, 12 millimeter wrench. You're going to need some kind of clippers, scissors, anything to help cut a zip tie. Um, and just to be, you're going to need like maybe a flat screwdriver or a pick or something like that. And that's just to kind of push a connector away from a switch just to make it a little bit easier. You'll see what I mean when we get there. Um, so we're going to take our Phillips screwdriver and take the two screws out of the funnel area here. Mine's magnetic, so it helps pull them up after they're unscrewed. If they're, you, you don't have a mag magnetic screwdriver, you can kind of just fish your finger there or unscrew both of them take the lid off and dump them out. Just make sure you don't lose them because uh, you'll need them to put them back in. This one, oh, there we go. So we got that screw out, set those off to the side, make sure you don't lose them. And we're gonna take this out by pulling up on the back and then pulling back so it comes out from underneath this lip right here. And once you get there, you can pull the lid right off. Set that off to the side. Now, this is the pump we need to change out. Uh, in case you need a pump that has gone bad. As you can see, um, there's a little thermostat little thing attached to this older pump, uh, a couple wires, and then two wires going to the pump. You'll notice on the new pump, it doesn't have you know, a thermostat holder, and that is not needed anymore uh, because the wire that I'm going to show you to put on has got a little smaller thermal fuse. And that's basically just a safety device in case the pump overheats, it'll shut off and cut power off from the motor. Um, in my experience of working here, I've never actually seen that happen. So I'm gonna show you how to change this out real quick. What you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to undo this screw right, or this nut right here for the water line, which is what the 12 millimeter wrench is for. You're gonna unscrew it. Once you get it unscrewed just a little bit, you can actually spin it off with your fingers. And once you get it back far enough, it'll come off. If it doesn't, you just pull on it a little bit and it'll pull right off. The Teflon tube has a little flare on it that goes over this little nipple. Uh, the other end's got this rubber elbow that you just have to work off because it's on there pretty tight. As you can see, I'm struggling with it a little bit, but once you get it worked enough, you can actually get it to pop off and just kind of leave that hanging out there somewhere. All right, so now all you need to do is there's two screws way down in there. I don't know if you can see that, but there's one on either side of the pump on this bracket down underneath. So you're gonna use your screwdriver and undo the screws. And this is where it helps when you have a magnetic tip, because once you get these screws out, they're a little short guys, just like the ones on the funnel. It'll come with the screwdriver. And we're gonna set that off the side. We're gonna undo the other one and get that screw out. And you'll feel it once it's not in there anymore and it should come right out if you have magnetic tip. If not, you'll have to fish them out or whatever you can do to get that to work. Uh, so now we got the bracket undone, we can actually pull the pump up. And this is where we're gonna disconnect wires. The only two wires you're gonna worry about disconnecting is this double blue one that's on one side of the, the connections to the pump. So you're gonna lift, and if they don't wanna come off easily, like this one is not working for me, this is where I use a flat blade screwdriver and kind of wedge it underneath and turn until it pops it off. That's the easy way to get connections off sometimes or whatever you can use to kind of give you leverage to pop it off. So now we got the blue one off. We don't have to worry about this one because it's connected to this other this side of this little thermostat, which we're not gonna worry about. We don't need this anymore. So the other wire we gotta disconnect is this white one. So this white one, we're gonna pull off, and then like I said, if it gives you a hard time, 
use a screwdriver or something to help you pop it off. And once you get that done, then you can pull the pump right out. And this is where you're going to remove the pump from the rubber mount, pull the tubing off, and then you got your pump out. And when you get your pump out, you can then use a wrench or anything like that to unscrew this from your pump. And then after that, we're gonna set this off to the side. I'm not gonna take it completely off because I just wanna show you how to get to that and then how to put the new one on. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we've got all these zip ties. If you follow this white wire that was going to the stat, the thermostat, you're gonna have to cut all the zip ties that are holding the wires together on this white wire. So you're gonna cut all these wires all the way up and that wire connects to this bottom switch right here, which is your brew button basically. And we need to remove that from the switch. And in order to do that, this is a really easy way to do so. This front panel lifts up and comes off. There's holes for all the tabs on the back of this thing to go in and slide back down. And I'll show you how to do that when, uh, when I get done showing you where the wire is. So we're gonna set that outside. Now that that's out of the way, we can actually pull this whole switch mechanism out. And you can see that the white wire is right here that we need to disconnect. And that's where you would need one of the tools to help you because it's such a tight area. It's not easy to get to as you can see, but I did uh, actually was able to get it off with my fingers. But once you get that off, you have all the zip ties caught, you can take that white wire out of there. And when that white wire is out of there, you're gonna take the other wire that I mentioned earlier that you can purchase, um, and you're going to feed it through this opening and you're gonna connect it to that spot on the, the, the one end of the red wire. And then you can just turn your switch back around, put it back in the opening, and make sure these metal tabs are on the outside of this housing. And you're gonna keep it up in the air as much as possible with your fingers on the inside. And grab this panel. And the reason why I need this up is because this panel needs to be up a little bit to go into the slots around the, the sides here. And once you get it lined up just right, you'll see that the tabs all went in and now I can slide it down. And after you get this slid down and locked in, you're good on the front switch. Now all we gotta do is take this wire that we have, that we just put in, and take the blue thermal fuse, the new pump, you're gonna slide this blue thermal fuse into this little pocket on the back side of the pump where the connections are. So you just gotta get it started. Sometimes it's a little hard, but if you get it started, then it's just a matter of pushing it in and now that thermal fuse is in there. So you're just gonna take the, um, the, piece, the wire that's coming out of the thermal fuse and just plug it right in and onto the one connector. It doesn't really matter which one you put it on. I usually put it on the one that's closer to the fuse. That's because that's what they're normally hooked up to, but it's not a big deal. Uh, and then you're going to take the, now remember this white wire does not exist in here anymore, so don't get that confused in the video. The only wire that's left in here now is this blue one and we're going to hook the blue one up to the pump on the other connection and then you're going to take your, sorry about the pump dropping in there but um, you're going to take this rubber tubing that you're going to pop off the old pump and put it on the end of this one you got to pull the caps off there's caps on each end of this pump when we sell new ones to protect them from having stuff getting in them. Uh, another little trick I'd like to mention real quick, when you get a new pump, if you have a way, uh, like an air compressor or anything like that, you pull the caps off and force air through the pump real quick before you go ahead and install the pump. That'll help in case there's a dry lock on the pump. Uh, that'll help it prevent the dry lock so when you get in the machine, you don't have to try to force prime it. But if you don't do that, that's fine. If the pump is having a hard time when you first get it in and getting it going, you just gotta do a force prime. Um, which is basically hooking up a baster or something to the water in line and kind of forcing water into the pump to help it get going. Because sometimes they just get stuck from being sitting around for a while. Uh, but otherwise they'll be fine. But a quick, tri tick, uh, a quick tip, sorry, is to force air through this, to this end of the pump to come out and you'll see water shoot out. And that'll make sure your pump's not dry locked before you put it in. Just a quick thing I wanted to mention. All right, so basically you take your rubber tubing off and you put it on the pump and then you slide, make sure the bracket's still on the tubing, and then you're gonna slide that 
rubber tube or rubber bracket onto the pump again here, you see that there's a collar and this boot will go around the collar. Now, if for some reason that boot is loose, you're gonna get it onto the new pump and it takes a little bit of work sometimes, but if it's really loose and you feel like it's gonna pop off again, a real another quick tip is to put a zip tie around here and tighten it down as hard as you can, and that'll prevent the pump from trying to come off. Uh, but when you get that on, you then just take this and with a new pump and you get it back down in here. And at the same time, make sure your black tube doesn't get caught up in the wires and you're gonna keep this extra wire that you have now in the machine out of the way, and then you're gonna work it down, put your two screws in for the bracket to get it mounted back into place. Um, and then uh, you can also put your fitting off of the old pump here onto this new, new pump. Um, they will screw on, usually there's no problem. If you want, you can add like, a, um, thread lock of some sort, like a glue, but it has to be food safe uh, onto the fitting before you thread it into the new pump. But just take this fitting and thread it onto the new pump. Uh, and when you get the fitting on the new pump, you just gotta make sure when you put the new pump in that this is positioned in the correct way to connect to your water line, which is not hard to do because the neck of the pump actually turns. Once you get this tightened down there, you can actually turn, as you can see, the whole neck on the new or the old pump. So once you get the wires in, the bracket in, the tube on, you then just start, and your fitting on, then you start putting it in, screw your bracket into place. And then once that happens on the new pump, you're just gonna take this water line, connect it back to here, push it on, start threading it. And then you're gonna take your elbow here and you're just gonna push it back onto this other end of the fitting here like that on the new pump. Um, once you get that done, it's just a matter of adding a few zip ties in here, bundling up the wires again. Just don't pull on them too much, but you're gonna get this extra wire that's a little loose because this wire isn't actually made for this machine. It's actually made for like a titanium, which needs a lot longer piece of wire, but they don't offer this wire just for the classics. So I've learned throughout my years here that I can just use this wire, just bundle up the excess wire. Um, and then zip tie it all up. And once you get that, then you have a new pump installed in the machine. And then it's a matter of taking your lid, putting it back on, put your funnel in first, feed the front into the front here, and then push down and get the funnel to go through that opening on the right. And then put your two screws back in here. And that is how you can change an older Gaja coffee machine with this orange pump or any semi-automatic machine that might have this orange pump you can change it to the newer version pump just by replacing a wire and then you can use the new pump and that is it for this video uh, i hope this was helpful and this is ted from whole latte love repair center thank you want to learn more subscribe now so you'll know about the latest videos on everything coffee from whole latte love